Okay, welcome, welcome to episode 10. Oh my goodness. Uh, Long War of the Chosen. My name is Anthigator. And let's go uh, let's go recover a data cache from an advent train, huh? So here's the train. Here's the data cache. Let's see. So these, these are the kind of missions I always, 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 always end up uh, hurting myself in. I always underestimate how deadly things can be on these missions. I uh, don't know why. Just seems to be uh, seems to be one of my my fatal flaws. But uh, let's see what we can do here. Let's see. So let's bring. Um, I kind of I would really like to bring someone up along the top there, but it looks like the only one who can really get into any kind of decent position there is RPG Gamer Sub. I don't like to move my Shinobi first. Uh, I've talked about that on previous episodes. Just because if they get revealed. And I have absolutely no one uh, who can scout. And see, look at this. See, we've got this terribly positioned tower. I mean, wonderfully positioned if you're Advent, I suppose. Uh, that's going to be blocking us from proceeding through in concealment. So the question then is, do I want to take a slightly wider route? I've got all these buildings. I've actually never had an Advent train map with so many buildings on it. Uh, I think this is my first time having a city train map. I think uh, uh, previously I've only had them in the wilderness. So this is this is really intriguing to me. Um, I think I would like to to do that actually to to push around it. Maybe maybe come around along this way. This really may actually make this map a whole lot easier. Because if I can activate a pod over here, I mean I do have the edge of the map right here actually. So it's pretty unlikely to have a pod over there. But you know if I can activate a pod and deal with them up on the rooftop. That's one whole pot I don't have to take care of at the train, which seems to be what I always end up doing, is taking, uh, dealing with all of the pods at the train all at once. So if I can avoid that, that would be splendiferous. Splendiferous, I say. Um, you know what, let's just, we're gonna run out into the open. If, if we get spotted, we get spotted. I, I, obviously I would prefer we didn't, but, you know, um, On the move. some things some things aren't worth uh, being overly careful about. Okay, let's see about bringing Luxon out to. Well, how about we bring Trank actually? So actually, what is this hack? Decision in a PCS. I mean, I guess it's maybe worth trying the PCS if I'm sitting there waiting for the evac. Rolling. And I've got vision on it. Oh, there's some enemies. This is kind of what I thought. This is, I was going to say there might be enemies down here. And moving to the edge there was kind of risky. Uh, but, oh, okay. So they really, really spread out on me too. All right. Let's see here. So we have a couple different folks who can really really take care of some of these guys so I've got a Guskin who will need to run and gun no matter what so I may I may be running gunning a Guskin to here and taking the shot on this officer but that's not gonna be enough damage uh, unfortunately I don't have a way to flamethrow two of them so let's see I could I could try and bomb this uh, or grenade this uh, this officer with zealot here uh, and then I guess I could go in and finish him off and then I've got just Luxon and Trank remaining Luxon could move to here. I, I don't really know how uh, how the flamethrower works about going down. I mean, I guess it does go down, huh? I would I would suspect that if I went here, I'd be able to flamethrow down onto that sentry. And then all I've got is this trooper remaining. 
hopefully. All right. Uh, yeah, let's let's do that first. I really want to. Um, oh. Okay, so we know there are some guys near that. Uh, that explosive barrel right there. Um, interesting. Alright, so we do have a flamethrower option right there, and we had a, a nice little line up there where it was kind of hitting all around that sentry too. Um, I really want it to hit, there we go. See as much around the sentry as possible, so that he can't really run anywhere without running through the fire. He is burning, excellent. Move Zealot up to here, and launch our frag, blam. Looks like we might have blown up his cover. We did, wow, actually this gives the potential, if Trank can hit this shot, actually, or we did so much damage, we could guarantee it, so it's a 71%, or we could combat protocol him and just guarantee that he's dead, which would mean Augustkin. Uh, could move. Gosh, it is a shame he can't get, like, just a couple tiles further, huh? But that would really give Augustin the opportunity to move someplace, like, right here. And take this, uh, this point-blank shot. I think I don't want to risk the, uh, the 71%. That's a 29% chance that this would fail. We're gonna go ahead and combat protocol. That was a really, really, really nice grenade from Zealot. That was that was beautiful and wonderful. I love everything about it. Okay, so we're gonna run and gun, and I could actually move into some cover uh, and be down here, just in case some guy runs through. I think I will do that. It's it it won't be the the huge the the, the as high of a chance of uh, blowing that guy out of the water. There, I think there will be a small chance. Ooh, shit. Okay, we have another drone here. That's okay. It's a drone. Um, he's going to come and stun something. Uh, hopefully it's not Trank, because Trank can use his last combat protocol to just remove this guy. Uh, Augustkin should have a pretty decent shot of killing him, too, considering he's got the uh, armor-piercing rounds. So, alright. 100%. You're dead. Minimum damage, but that is good enough. So I do actually have the option here. Um, I could come out and try and flush this guy. It's only a 91% chance to hit, though. Um, and then I would lose my scouting. I would definitely rather not do that. Uh, so we're going to move... RPG Gamers have out to here, and just hold tight, a little overwatch, 3 damage on the burn, wonderful, he's dead. Okay, so it looks like Trank is going to be the one who gets stunned, and huh. okay. definitely not ideal, definitely, definitely not ideal, but worse things have happened. Uh, Alright, let's bring Augustkin up here, see if he can finish off this drone in one shot. 100%. Uh, ooh, armor piercing is piercing through two armor. Ooh, actually, I thought it only pierced one. I don't know why I thought that. There we go. Alright, now let's move up to Gamers Hub out to here. We've got a nice little option to pick up that loot and continue moving. So Trank is stunned for two turns, so this turn and next turn, uh, definitely not ideal. But we have killed half of the map, and we have not taken any wounds, we've collected all the loot. Uh, yeah, we burned through a few resources on that, we burned through one of our flamethrowers, one of our grenades. But I, I think we're still in a pretty good position here. So let's now move RPG Gamers up out to here. So I still, I 
still have a shot on this thing, and I'm not exactly sure what that will do. Looks like I could attempt, I could sit here and try and explode it. And just remove some of these enemies off the map. But I think we're going to be a little bit patient here. Uh, remember, I do have Trank sitting here stunned, so I would I would much prefer we sit here and uh, um, and don't quite engage just yet. I think we have the extra time. All right, so this is where it gets really risky with vision. So first, I'd like to move up to here, see if we can see anything down in that direction. Mm, okay. Now this this is the risky move, right? This is where I, I step up and potentially get spotted, just like I did on the last area. Okay, so we see nothing. Let's move Agriskin out to here, and we're going to... Pop a reload. Okay, so knowing that we don't have anything to worry about, really, I'm gonna move. Should I just step up, take shots on that thing? This is really, really tempting. Two to four. It's not going to hit. It's only hitting the first tile of the train, so it won't hit the objective there. Now, I guess it's possible that some of those things would explode. Um, yeah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to risk the objective. Not yet. There's no need for it. So let's move Zealot out to here. We're going to move Luxon to kind of right next to him. Double time. And now we've got the option to start moving Trank in. Um, and I do need to drop my evac. I should have done that already, uh, but that's OK. So actually. Super. Oh, so there's enemies now on the other side of that one as well. Okay, so we know where all the enemies on the map are, interestingly. Um, all right, so I, I can't quite get a hack. We're going to move Trank up here. I, I really want to see uh, if there's uh, the potential for uh, Trank to step to some place like over here and somehow you know get get vision on to the objective I don't I don't really don't think there will be unfortunately uh, I think I'm gonna have to move Trank into here um, but we'll see we'll see I'd like to drop the evac you know and after what I've seen with previous things I don't want to drop the evac in some place uh, I'd like to put it someplace where I can stand and cover so I am gonna put it there okay this is firebrand evac request confirmed Hold tight. And I'm still I'm still gonna hold tight on that. Let's move. See if I can move RPG Gamers Hub all the way out, right, and around uh, this way. Because since I know that there's enemies close to this one and this one, that should be the other two pods on the map. There shouldn't be any more than that. I'll be really surprised. Um, so. Let's move RPG Gamer Sub out to here. Ooh, I saw some 7 HP, something standing over there. Um, and we're going to take a super wide berth around this train, see if we can gain some, uh, some vision for movement next turn. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to move Luxon to right here and sit in Overwatch. Uh, Griskin is going to move out to there. And we're going to move Zealot to here, Overwatch. Now those guys might walk out into our vision right into this direction. Nope, not yet. Okay. So, first, 
Like I said, we're taking a super wide berth. I just want to see where they are. There's pod of three. Okay. So that is, that was a stun lancer, sectoid, and sentry, I believe. Oof. Okay. Let's move a little bit closer and make sure we can continue gaining line of sight on them. Uh, so I guess since this guy can't step out to where the sectoid is, I can't see that. Oh, oh no, he's actually a tile back. I think the sentry's standing right there. That is a heck of a pod. Um, that's for sure. Uh, I now want to see, let's, okay, so can Trank, yeah, there's no places out in this direction where Trank can view the container. So I know that Trank would be able to do it from way back here. So I might just move Trank to here. These guys are a step back from that so they won't have line of sight out. That'll give Trank the option of uh, running out there and um, hacking. Potentially, I wonder if he'd be able to do it from someplace like way back here without even activating that pod. That would be super interesting. So let's actually move Trank to here. And that means that, so that, that other, where I can shoot, uh, shoot this, or could have shot this one over here, I bet that was uh, another solo drone. Uh, it could have been a pot of two, um, but that would be the last things to be worried about on this map. Uh, all right, so if you move to here, you can still move to here and sit in an overwatch. If you say so. Now, see, those, that did cause those guys to yell, unfortunately, um, which put these guys on yellow alert. See, it shows active four, so that that means that that was a solo drone that is now on a uh, yellow alert. So that's that's I've learned that that is what that means. Uh, it's not it's not anything else. Scanning. All right. Um, so Aguskin, uh, let's keep you. Uh, I want to get you as close as possible here, and with them on yellow alert. Uh, it is possible that they will be taking shots on us as they move forward though, so let's overwatch now. So those guys are really unlikely to come from the session. They're gonna come through this train. So I will move Zealot to here. Now that drone could come up and over. But I find it pretty unlikely. Yep, so here they come. There's a nice little... I'll take the Grays for 3 damage. And a miss on the Sectoid. I don't know why it didn't hit the Stun Lancer. But Zealot will graze the Stun Lancer. So 2 Grazes on that Stun Lancer. Alright, what are you gonna do? Is that grazing a zombie? Whoa, you can try and mind control as a yellow alert action? Wow, okay. And you're gonna take a shot as well. And that's disoriented him. That is really unfortunate. Um, okay, so we, this is everything on the map. We know that we can just go uh, with uh, RPG Gamers Hub. That's gonna be 100% killing this sectoid. That is that is the move we have to make. Yep, you're spotted. That's fine. There we go. Really needed that to not be a graze, and it was not, so that's good. Oh, wow. That's right, Luxon got disoriented too. Oh, no. That really hurts. Um, so, I think what this means is we're going to have to basically just move uh, up and take these point blank shots. We're gonna have to hope that these can all hit. Uh, Luxon can come up here. I mean, we've only got stun lancers and drones, so these stun lancers are going to melee anyway. Um, so let's move Luxon. Uh, we wanna be adjacent. We wanna take this guy out. So 
Come on, don't graze. There we go. 32% any crits. Alright. So, I can move Aguskin to here and take the shot on this, uh, uh, this, this guy. But first I want to see, actually, uh, well, I know that that's where Aguskin's going to move. So, I guess we'll, we'll go ahead and try and take this shot. Um, so, 100%. Actually, I don't want to take the shot yet because I want to see how much damage Zealot can do. If he doesn't do enough damage, if he grazes for one, I'm going to be stunning that stun lancer instead of uh, shooting it. So, 100%. Three damage. Okay. I feel really good about the chances for Aguskin here to kill this guy then. You're dead. And so at this point, we're going to have Trank. So Trank will still be able to see this drone if he stands right here. Uh, and then we can grab the container with Trank next turn. So we can grab this loot. Excellent. And now, combat protocol, and the drone is dead. Okay. Pretty, pretty good. Pretty good. Something. Okay. So, Trank, let's go ahead. Hack the chest. Last turn, it's available. Whew. This mission has gone pretty well. Pretty well. I like it. Okay, small cache of alloys or extensive cache of intel. Intel is so much more valuable. I really want to try and get that. We can't, we can't roll high with Trank no matter what. Oh my goodness. All of our specialists, just absolutely garbage rolls. Uh, honestly, it's hilarious at this point. Uh, now let's go ahead and move Trank into position there. We're gonna move RPG Gamers Hub. It's stand right here. Move you to here. Jeez, um, I guess we'll just be standing in the evac. This is fine. And all of you guys. Now, reload. Reload and reload, just in case. There's there's absolutely no way we're gonna deal with anything else. See, reinforcements are coming down next turn. That's fine. Everybody overwatches. We might get some shots on these guys. Uh, we might not. Depends on where they land. Uh, looks like we might have vision. I, I actually can't tell. It they could be. Yeah, I think they're around the uh, the storage container there. So I don't think we're gonna have vision on them. Nope. This is firebrand. And here's our evac. Time to leave. There we go. Very successful mission. I am happy to take that. Okay. That is a flawless victory. That is our first liberation mission of the campaign. Operation Laughing Grasp. That deserves a nice photo. Ooh, I like that photo. Let's, uh, let's... Let's uh, just get a little bit of vision on Luxon's face there. Let's zoom out just slightly so you can see uh, RPG Gamers Hub as well. Actually, uh, let's turn that back so we can see Zealot's face and Aguskin's face. Look at that. Look at that. I love it. All right. Earth is ours and XCOM will fight for it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Very happy with that. Very, very happy with that. That went beautifully for uh, a train mission. Everyone's coming home. They disoriented us twice. And it didn't matter. We still cleaned up everything in one turn. Thanks to some wonderful grazes. Uh, on that first, uh, first stun lancer. All right. So here we've got, so this is Zealot with a ridiculously high mobility for a Grenadier. Um, I, I gotta love it. I gotta appreciate it. Uh, doesn't have anything in his XCOM perks row that's really gonna change the way I build him, though. Uh, I'm just gonna keep, keep going sappers. Alright, Luxon. Our first corporal technical. 
Beautiful. Napalm at X. Absolutely. Trank. So we've got combat protocol already. Uh, at this point, I mean, covering fire is meh. Interference is the worst ability in the game. So might as well go for Field Surgeon. And a Guskin. So 16 mobility. He's got 70 aim. He's got lightning reflexes. Uh, I, I'm actually really thinking with him, I think I might go Trench Gun. Let's see, what else does he have here? Ghost Walker, like lightning. When Running Gun is activated, your arc door cooldown is immediately reset to zero. Interesting. Target focus. Okay. That's actually really, really good to gain one pierce against unflankable enemies. Um, fighter. Combat fitness is always good. Trade craft. Huh. I'm, I think I'm just gonna go trench gun. I take close and personal so often, but we're gonna we're gonna see if we can get some trench guns to succeed here. Look at that auto loader stock expanded mag defense. Three days till combat armor. This is going wonderfully, and we have a scientist. So normally I would sit here and wait for a good time to go scan uh, one of these, but with a scientist, that is that is by far the most valuable uh, benefit that, that I could be getting right there. So I'm definitely scanning for that. Ooh, we have a rendezvous. Okay, who do we have here? You know, it's only been a 27 minute mission. We're gonna go ahead and take care of this rendezvous uh, and uh, and set up for the next mission. Ah, gotta love the rendezvous. These are pretty quick missions usually anyway. This worked wonderfully. I decided to bring Ripper uh, along. I stuck him in here and I even said, I even said, hey, just in case I can just happen to get a rendezvous with him. Ooh, ooh, this is gonna be a beautiful, beautiful thing. All right. Look at that, we got our four rebels. So that means there's only going to be one faceless because I only had five resistance personnel in this haven in the first place, uh, if I remember right. Here's our rendezvous. We have assault rifle, frag, flash, assault rifle, fla frag, flash, assault rifle, frag, flash, and smoke. And he also has, what is this? Uh, your grenades now pierce up to two points of armor and shred one additional point of armor. Interesting. I don't know that that's going to be valuable on this mission, but I am certain uh, if he survives that it will be valuable later. And Assault Rifle, Frag, Flash. Okay, so everyone got the standard loadout. Um, no SMGs, which is uh, actually kind of unfortunate. I would have pre preferred to have one SMG just so I could have a guy running up quick. Uh, but that's all right. We've got Ripper on this mission. So let's bring him out to here. Okay, we see nothing yet. We'll bring Akbanja up there and Weili there and Gusun uh, on it. So there, we're, we're we're fine. We don't really need to be in cover right now. Uh, and Rashik to that. Okay. So this is the edge of our map right here. Uh, and look at that, we gain some visibility on our first pod here. Trooper, trooper, trooper. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Uh, so nothing, no place for you to really go, so. Alright. Let's move you here. We'll move you to here. You here, you here, and now actually, so what am I gonna do with Ripper? I think Ripper might end up coming all the way down here. Oh my gosh, it is it is super tempting actually to just pop a Wrath right into the middle of them after I set up an Overwatch. Just Wrath to this guy in case all my rookies miss. <laughs> I mean, Ripper could clean this these guys up by himself to be honest. He rats right there. These two leave that spot. He'll be right there. He'll get uh, 
his uh his retribution there on both of them oh my goodness how beautiful would that be let's go ahead and set the rest of these guys up on overwatch uh we're gonna smart overwatch others scanning overwatch, 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 overwatch this is just too much fun i can't not do it even though this might activate some like another pod further in i just i can't i can't not do it how can i how can i avoid this this is beautiful i love this you're dead it did activate the other pod but we're gonna pick up the scope it activated the faceless even okay so let's let's see what happens with that this <laughs> Oh man. Okay, well you killed that one. I I guess I'll grab this loot too. Uh okay. So this guy hasn't run yet. So he, that was the smartest move he could have made because by not running he didn't activate the Overwatch and he didn't activate retribution. That, honestly, that's hilarious. Props to that guy. Seriously. Uh well played. Well played. Uh, I could move, I could grapple Ripper up to here and set him on an overwatch as well, uh, which will force these guys to run up, um, and it's, he's probably going to be able to blue move and move up, but I don't think he can blue move to a flank position, so if he tries to flank, um, that would be a yellow move, and I'll get some overwatches, so I think this is our best play. Uh, we'll move up to here, and we still have three rookie overwatches. Plus, now we have, actually, gosh, he gets so many actions. Look at this. He wrathed down there, killed one guy, another guy left, he retributioned to that guy, he grappled up here, he's going to take this shot, and he's going to get to Overwatch. This is disgusting. He's going to kill that guy, and Overwatch. I should have actually killed him while I was standing right next to him. It's like, grab the loot. Look at that. Now he's going to kill this guy too, 57%. Ripper just killed three guys by himself. 81% miss, 88% miss. Wow. Okay. So he hit that guy. Uh, Alright. So if Ripper moves to here, he can get a flank on this guy and shoot this guy. And uh, we only have these two enemies left on the map. Uh, so let's do that. Right, 94%. Please kill him. Ooh, we graze. Alright. Well, we definitely need uh, to deal as much damage as we can to that bad boy. Um... This does mean, however, that I'm going to need to move someone else down here to take a shot on this trooper. 78%. I don't like those odds, but we got him. <laughs> we actually crit. Love it. Uh, Alright. I think we're, we're set up pretty well here with the amount... So we've got three other shots here, all with assault rifles. I feel pretty good about our chances to, uh, to take this guy out. 97% without using frags is, is where I was going with that. Not that there's really any reason not to use frags, to be honest. But, that's alright. I mean, it's the same damage range. I guess this is 3 to 5 instead of 2 to 5. Plus, we could crit, <laughs> but I guess with grazes, it goes down to, to 2, huh? Alright. Uh, Ripper, let's see if you can finish this guy off. 3 to 6 damage. Just don't min roll. You got him. And that's the mission. That was beautiful. That was the most perfect mission. Oh, I love that mission. Opening up with that wrath, it's, it was not the smartest play. But considering that he could grapple back and everything, I mean... I don't know about you, but... I loved it. I absolutely loved the way that worked out. Wrath down there, kill one guy, retribution another guy. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh, I love it. I guess he didn't actually retribution, did he? 
uh, the rookie killed one. So, he, so uh, Ripper came down. He wrathed the guy. He grappled back up. Shot another guy. Overwatch to kill another guy. So he killed three guys in one turn. The rookie killed one guy then. And then... Yeah, so rookies killed two guys. Or the resistance personnel, rather. And, uh, and Ripper killed... The Faceless plus three troopers. Three troopers in one turn, no less. Love it. Where they go, the aliens die. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's my favorite mission of the campaign right there. I love that. Absolutely in love with the way that played out. Oh, that was gorgeous. I'm going to be riding that high for a while. I love that. You see how many actions these skirmishers can get in Long War of the Chosen? It is absolutely insane. He's up to 16 kills on 6 missions. Ripper's such a beast. He's our first sergeant. Alright. Uh, gain plus 3 mobility with every kill this turn. Wow. Last for 2 turns. That's new since last time I played. Uh, Whiplash is a pretty fantastic ability, or was before. Let's see, so this doesn't say anymore that it's a free action. Uh, it used to be a free action. It's probably not anymore. Hmm. Iron is not in your turn, so secure kills in your turn, take turn full throttle, only kills by skirmisher count towards full throttle. See how much mobility he could gain from that? I used to take Whiplash all the time. And I think I may do that anyway right now. It will give him an extra option when he's run out of ammo. Uh, he's still got this to, to be a finisher. I'd like to find out if it's still a free action. It looks like it's not. Um, but this is also a good finisher for him to use on robotic enemies. So let's do that. We gained two scopes, a hair trigger, an advanced expanded bag, five trooper corpses, and a faceless corpse. Ha ha ha. Love it. We have a bond, apparently, between Trank and RPG Gamers Hub. Actually, that is a wonderful, wonderful bond to make. Uh, I really like that idea. Twin Towers of Pain. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. All right, let's see. So that was our recruiting uh, personnel. So we're going to switch one of these guys back to recruit. Now we're very confident that all three or all four of these guys are not uh, faceless, so that's wonderful news. Um, and that actually means so what I'm going to do here is switch our Haven advisors. So we had Rav in there, but I'm going to put Ripper back in. Just give the option uh, in case we do find um, another faceless. That way we've got. Ripper again to go deal with it. How wonderful would that be if he if he scopes out two faceless in a row? Oh, that would be beautiful. And we gained a target off that. Okay, so this would be our next liberation mission. As you can see, two days, five hours. We're not doing that uh, at very light there. That's not happening. I'd love to go do it, but we're going to go get a scientist over here instead. Got Riku's Risky Reactionaries for the Jailbreak, and wow, it's a squad heading for... Uh, oh, this is actually our first Liberation Mission. I thought we just did our first Liberation Mission, but we did not. That's all right. We have another Supply Raid. Four days, nine hours. Fascinating. Let's go check it out. Are we going to be able to pull off two supply raids in our starting region? This is worth using 30 intel on if I need to boost it. 
However, I mean, look at this. We're at light, moderate, 16 to 18 enemies. And I mean, with, with, like, if I just, yeah, see, I would need to only bring five enemies. Oof. Even with a boost, or five, five soldiers to take out 16 to 18 enemies. I don't feel good about it. I really don't. If I had a little bit more time, if I could bring six soldiers, if this was at light instead of light moderate, I mean, I, it's, it's not a problem, you know, I, I could pull Ripper out of his Haven advisorship and bring him down into this. Um, I'm not really concerned about that aspect of it. I mean, Aguskin has the trench gun, which would, could be a really nice opener. I could bring a, a technical. But if I'm honest, there's no way I do this mission without serious wounds. Is that worth it? If I say that I lose all these soldiers for two weeks and one dies permanently, if I take one death and the rest of them take heavy wounds, but I, but I kill everything, gain 16 to 18 corpses. What happen if... What happens if we bring rangers? That puts this up to 115%. So I do have to keep in mind, right, if I boost this, if I spend this intel, and boost this, this could this 115% that could trigger and put that down to light. And then it's 12 to 15 enemies, which is honestly a lot more manageable. This actually is a really, really good mission for a sharpshooter. Um, especially if I can hole up in the corner, send RPG Gamers Hub out uh, to scout, and then pick them off slowly, bringing them closer to me, and uh, picking them off with uh, a sharpshooter. Okay. Where's what scattergun? Oh, the scattergun is a blast from the past thing. Oh, I thought that was a. Uh... Isn't that the same name as the laser shotgun? Oh, interesting. Okay. Doesn't Trank have... Nope, Trank has awful aim. Uh, yours is only 66, though. But, alright. You're gonna get this laser stun gun. Definitely adding a stock here, and you need an auto loader and an advanced laser sight. Take the scope? You can. Cool. And an advanced expanded mag. And we'll give you the other scope. And hair trigger. Actually, you know what? Since you're going on this mission, take the advanced hair trigger, just in case. Um. 
I'll save that expanded mag for a different squad here. Is this who I want to bring? Actually, Rav would be a better choice over Zakir because then I'd have an officer on this mission. Because my other officers are both infiltrating on the same mission. Unfortunately, Rav is just a better choice to bring than Zakir, so let's strip those. Okay. Alright. And I could bring Ripper on this as well, actually. He, he would be better to bring than Trank. Let's let's take a look at that. Pull you out. Pull you out. So let's make this Ripper's Ripper's Resistance since Ripper is on this. But I'm gonna take off some of those guys. I need my my biggest my biggest booms on this one. And grab. So that puts us up to essentially 117 percent. Let's expand and max. Give you a hair trigger and a scope. stock and who else did I get a scope to? I think I gave it to Luxon. Let's take that off of you. Um, geez, okay. Strip those up and upgrades. You can have the expanded mag for now. Click the right button and scope. Okay, we have an advanced hair trigger. There we go. All right. He's got all the mobility in the world, and mobility is not a key factor on this mission. I mean, obviously it's helpful, but uh, I can afford to, to toss in some, some items there, and it'll be all right. Let's then give any of Rav a flashbang and a medkit. And we're gonna give Luxon a medkit as well. And you might need a flash. Okay. I think the only PCS we have is defense, which is not really great for a sharpshooter, because hopefully he'll be standing in the back and won't uh, won't take anything anyway. So I think this is the squad. We're gonna boost it. That'll bring us up to 113%. It's possible this goes down to light, which would be 12 to 15, that would be ideal. But even at 16 to 18. If I open strong and stay in good positions, I think we can do this. 
Ooh, that's gonna be a heck of a mission. That's gonna be one heck of a mission. If we can keep the strength from increasing again. Oh, wouldn't that be beautiful? So we are strength two. If we can stop that from happening again, how wonderful would that be? Okay. Let's, let's continue to go scan for the scientist. Scan for our third scientist. There we go. Awesome. Got our third scientist. That's wonderful. We've got two things already going on in West Asia. Uh, I need to get some more missions going on in, in West India, or New India rather. We have another mission up here to pull in a new technical and an intel package. Four days, ten hours, extract a VIP. Wow. You've seen how valuable his intel packages could be. That could be another scientist. It could be an engineer. It could be Advent. Or, no, sorry, not Advent. It could be... Um, uh, Avenger power. All right, so we've got Trank's terrific trailblazers here. Oh, you know what I didn't do is put up my Haven advisors after that too. Uh, I've still got a whole bunch of folks here. I don't have any shinobis. In 27 hours, I get a new shinobi or, or a shinobi coming back, but that's it. Um, I do have my two. My Grenadier and Assault coming back in zero days on this covert action, which I think means zero hours as well. Um, so actually, let's go take a look at that. Yep, here we go. They succeeded. Wonderful. Gained 54 supplies. Gained some XP. That's actually pretty nice. Oops, that's not what we wanted. Uh, this is down to four days, nine hours now instead of four days, ten hours. We lost an hour out of that. Let's see. So, Klepto is a really good option here. An ever vigilant ranger. Let's make sure you have ceramic plating at least before we push on. Um, who else is really good for this? Um, Overwatch specialist is unfortunately not really great for this mission. Grenadiers. Well, I've already got a grenadier on the mission. An assault is pretty good for this mission. But take a look at that. See, with four guys here, we're already only at 95%. There's absolutely no way I'm running this as a three man squad. This is not worth a boost. Not, not with how badly I need to expand. So, what happens if I switch Zealot out for someone else? Like another Ranger. Puts me up to 99%, but once I add in your ceramic plating, we're at 98%, and let I me mean, look at this, we have no grenades. So, alright. I think what we're going to do here is stick Zella back in here. This is 95%. We're going to send these four out. They're going to go infiltrate. And we're going to see if they happen to uh, roll that 95% over into the 100%. If, if that triggers the, the next breaking point uh, and we get lucky then, uh, we'll go on the mission. If not, I'm going to bring them back home. An assault is worthwhile of gaining that defense. We will give Goose this uh, this defense, but so these four, they're gonna they're, we're gonna send them out, and we might be pulling them back home at any moment. 
I'd love to get another Lieutenant Corporal Technical. It's always good to gain extra soldiers. Especially above squatty rank. I mean, uh, that is really nice. Intel package is really nice. But it's not worth losing a soldier I've already got. And I could lose all four of these soldiers if this doesn't roll over to 100%. Or roll over to, uh, uh, to extremely light. To the, the default state. So we're going to start that infiltration. Like I said, really, really might just pull that back. Might not end up doing that at all. Okay, look at this. We have combat armor. Oh my goodness. Wow. Alright, let's research some advanced laser. And then I think we'll be trying for resistance radio. I, I think I'd really like to get a third um a third place before I do that. I've seen members of the crew quiet. Um, a third region. Which would be New Arctic, I believe. It's 100 intel. Because everywhere. Oh, that's 100 intel. Uh, right, we've got New Arctic or East Asia, that's right. And then Eastern Europe uh, would be 200 intel to go to, as would New Indonesia. Yeah, okay. Alright, uh, well, let's, uh, let's continue scanning. And. Okay. Wow, it's a squad. It is going to do our first liberation mission. With there's something in the air. We're bringing Christian, Skizzle, Olivox, and Neff. A four man squad. With a technical. Shooty Ranger. Who has a laser rifle, by the way. Uh, Gunner. And Shinobi. So that's going to be our next mission. Another recover from a train. Oof. Okay. Uh, we're going to gain 25 intel from this. That's fantastic. All right. This was a heck of a of an episode. Um, absolutely loved that rendezvous. Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll catch you next time. Good luck, Commander.